All right, so first I want to do is, uh, we already read from a, the string and put it into an array and things like that, but I want to start by making a class to hold my file input and output. So I made a class that I called file utilities. So I'm going to make a, a new Swift file called uh, file utils. And I'm going to create a class in here that's going to hold my two reading and writing methods. And it's just a way just to show you some more use of a class and uh, putting some common methods together. Uh, so we create a class. I'm going to call it file utils. And it's just another example of playing around with Swift. Um, what I want in here are some attributes that if I create a new object from my file utils, it knows the name of the file that I'm going to read and write from and the path that it's going to read and write from. And I can set that once and then I don't have to worry about, I can just say, read from the file, write to the file. So it, it makes it a little bit simpler. So I need, a, I need some attributes or properties to my class the file name. I'm going to have uh, the default directory, which is where it's going to be stored, directory. Um, and I'm going to put it in its uh, tilde desktop. directory and then I need a, a path, a full path directory that won't have anything to start with. So those are the three main attributes that, that I'm going to have. And when I initialize it, we have to call the init method. So this is a lot like Ruby. It had a, an initialize method, remember? So I want to initialize it with a file name that's of type string and a location which is of type string. So this is sorry, string. This is how I used it to call my write method or my read method. I needed this location and uh, the file name itself I think is what I needed. Yes. So in my class I can set those properties now to say the file name is going to be file name. Ah, boy, I like to put semicolons in there. Um, and then my path is going to be whatever the location came in plus a slash, let's see, plus my file name. So that's going to be my full path that I'm going to actually read and write to. All right, does that make sense so far? We can, we can uh, clean this up more later. Then there's another init that, that I could do. Another, remember we can overload this to have multiple ways of initializing it. If I just pass in the file name, then I need to set the self.file name. Why do I have to use self here? Right, it, because, because I kept the name the same, it doesn't like this because it's trying to assign to itself something like that. Uh, because the incoming file name by default is a let variable, which it makes it a constant. All right, so I can't can't define. It's trying to assign a constant back into itself, which is a constant. So to take away that ambiguity, I use the self. Now I could make this. Remember in in Java. We do things like that so that I don't have to 
do this cell for this dot. But the, the way Swift works, I have to tell the outside world that this is the variable. When I call my init, I have to say underscore file name colon and the, the name of the variable. So it exposes the name, which is supposed to be kind of hidden, which I don't like. But there you go. So then my, uh, if I don't have a, a default directory, a directory that they passed in, I have to use my default directory that I've set. Uh, hard, I've hard-coded my file utils to have a default directory of the desktop. So then I have to set my path to be my default directory plus a slash plus my file name. All right, so that's an overloaded init that I can either set the location or use the default that's built into my class. Okay, any questions on that so far? Well, I want to ask for the uh, animal. Do you need an init for every single combination that a user can potentially? So, like, say it asks. Not for necessarily. Now, you remember, you're writing classes for the for the programmer. So the user doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the user says. But for an init, I would no, probably, when, for uh, the animal. When you create a new animal, say they just hit enter for the name, it'll try to initialize with, with a blank. Yeah. Uh, I would call that an error because it's not one of the animals I have in my list. Right. Um, yeah, so would, would you have to initialize with that? You, gotta check for that? you have to check for it. And if it comes as a blank, then don't allow it, prompt it perform again. So I wouldn't create an animal with a blank name. Yeah. All right, any other questions on this so far? One class, two overloaded initializers or constructors, uh, like we call them in Java. So then we need to create some methods for our function and I'm gonna have one called read file and I want it to return a string. Boy, this, this uh, syntax is really weird for me. <laughs> I'm uh, having trouble with it. So I'm gonna create a return string because I like these ret strings. That's how I program. Uh, so that I only have one way to return from my method. And at the very end, I'm gonna return my return string. So I'm gonna build up a string um, with uh, data as I read from the file. So it says, this is a warning you can get away with because I haven't written any code yet. It thinks so far I haven't used this variable, so why not make it a let, right? It's never been mutated, which means it's never been changed. So it should be a, a let variable. They're really strong on making these constants if they can. So it must be really optimized for constants. I don't know. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, with the, yeah, I don't know. So um, I'm going to create my location. Remember yesterday, we or a couple days ago, we had to expand our tilde variable. Um, using the string by expanding tilde and path, this nice long method. So I need to do that in my method. That's the problem is I, wrong keys for copying and pasting. I have a <laughs> I have a PC keyboard now, so we do copy. <laughs> there we go, okay. and paste. I did a, I did a cut. <laughs> okay. I can't even do a Control oh. Z, man. Come on. So here's my location. Again, it gives me the same error. Uh, 
but my location is not going to change, so I'm going to make it a let variable. I'm going to make it a constant. And then it gives me a warning that says, uh, never used, consider replacing it with an underscore. I don't remember. I saw that once, but I haven't uh, placed that in my mind yet. I don't know. So we just skip that because we're still writing code. So we can skip warnings for now. So then once I have a full location, I can use the uh, that NS data that we did yes yesterday and I actually read the contents of that if I can get my copy and paste right uh, so I get a variable content I'm going to read the contents of the file from the location that was all created for me and then we have to do all of that conversion uh, so I'm going to convert that to a string by this is casting but in reverse uh, the content and I want to convert that immediately from a, a uh, an optional optional value straight into a string and remember that this data is uh, just binary data, right? It's not, it's just ones and zeros. When we looked at it, it actually prints it in hex, but it's just binary data. So we have to convert that into using a particular character set. We use the encoding and we use the NSUTF8 uh, string encoding. So now my data string is a real string. Lots of, that's just so much word, very wordy this language is. <laughs> uh, then I have to uh, unwrap that so that I can return a real string. So I have to, this could still be an optional data. This could still be nothing in it. So to unwrap it, we use that uh, if let construct, and we use uh, any variable. It's like a local variable. Uh, I'm going to assign it to that. And if it has value, I'm going to set my return string to the value of, of the unwrapped data. Otherwise, I get nothing, and nothing means that I'm going to get a blank string because that's what I set my return string for. So I don't really have like an else here. Uh, else is that I'm defaulting to my return value of a blank. So if my file has data, it's going to return the data as a string. Otherwise, it's going to return a blank string. So in my calling program, I don't have to worry about uh, optionals and things like that. Any questions on that method? I know it's got to look a little bit like Greek to you at this point. It does to me. Yeah. So. A little bit like what? Greek. Oh. Greek. It's uh, very strange. I spent uh, a few hours getting this to work right. So. So then I need a, a write file method, right? And uh, I already know the file name. Well, I don't know why I'm passing in the file name. Because uh, I think I can make that better. And the data that I want to write out. And I want to return a Boolean if it wrote it or correctly or not. All right. So again, I'm going to have a, a ret val uh, is going to be by default false, meaning it didn't write it correctly. If it did, later on I'm going to set that value to true, and then at the bottom I'm going to return my ret val. Call this. That's just just the way I like to program. I 
there's I almost always try to find a way to make a function or method return from one place. So you don't have multiple returns in a method. That makes it hard to follow the method. So this, this type of structure does that for you in most cases. So we're going to use this do try like we did yesterday. Uh, we're going to try to write the data. We're going to write to file and we're going to write to the path that is already built into my my structure it's already one of my attributes that was created from the init here right um, which is why i really don't need my file name uh, atomically true and the encoding was what we did yesterday was nsutf Eight string encoding. Why would they why not autocomplete it like at NSUT? At NSUT, <laughs> I know. They they have to wait until you get really far into it to do that. Uh, so that will try to write it. And if that works, I'm gonna set my ret val to be true. That worked okay. That means it was a successful write of the data. And then the catch part of this is to make a variable, call it error, um, as an ns error. And this is this is a uh, a throwback to the Objective C days. Um, they still have. They still haven't integrated Swift completely to take over Objective-C. So their error conditions are all using this old Objective-C NS error method. So we have to, we have to typecast this uh, error as an NS error object type. That's how we tell it that it's this type of an error object. Okay, so this as is like a, like a typecast for this very error. Then I'm just going to print out an error. Print out that I have an error, and we'll interpolate the error that I have. And then return my return value. I need a closing parenthesis. All right, there we go. There's a mess. So I really don't, I'm not using the file name at all coming in, uh, which is what I should have used before, because that's already created when I initialize this object. I don't want to write to a different file, so I really don't want to have that file name in here. I just want to send the data to the file that I've already created this object from. Does that make sense? So I have a file util object that I'm going to create, it has the path and the file name in it, and then later on I can either read from the file or write to the file. So my read file is going to return the data from the file. My write file takes an argument of data to write back to the file, to the same file. All right, isn't that fun? <laughs> yes, yes, it's best to close the file. Uh, we'll worry about that later. And when the program quits, it, it'll automatically close the file also. So, uh, Ruby does too, but it's all uh, there was a close. It, it's always best to do that. It seems to me that I don't, I haven't found it yet in Swift to close the file, but. Uh, um, it seems to me that these are, because they're atomic methods, it's opening the file, writing the file, and closing it at the same time is what it seems like to me. I don't know that for sure yet. That means do it all at once. No caching. No caching. No caching. All as one thing. Yeah, just write it all out to the disk. Instead of writing a line at a, a, line at a time or something like that. Um, 
you take this false is all. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, yeah, yeah. and that, that's what I haven't seen yet in closing, closing the file. It seems to me that this does it automatically. Otherwise, that would write a line at a time. Or it, it would write the data. Well, we can all right, so in my main program now, let's, let's play around with using that. So I'm going to comment all of this code out. And I wish they had folding, even basic editor stuff in here. Jeez. All right, so let's, let's play around with using them my little method um, so I first need to I'm gonna I'm gonna make a, a variable called uh, file name which is a string and I'm gonna assign it to books.txt so I created this little file over here on my desktop called books.txt because I'm not gonna read animal names for you uh, that has some data in it that's common delimited and I'm going to read these read this data in into a, a book object same kind of concept as you guys are doing but not exactly so I then need to create a uh, an object from my file utils class so I so I call file Uh, my file utils, and I'm going to pass it my single constructor, uh, which is my file name. All right, so I'm passing this string into my constructor. Now, file utils is what type of an object? It's a file utils object. So I could do file utility type stuff with it, right? <laughs> so I can say, Let's uh, read all of the data. I'm going to say book file data is file utils dot read file. So bada boom bada bing, my my book file data is now what type of data? File utils. No. Uh, remember what did my read file return? String. So, my. Is it an optional? No, because oh, my so I converted yeah. it. I took away the optionalness. So it's either going to be a blank string, or the data from the file. Because I don't like working with optionals. I hate those things. Does your file utils in your book file data has any impact? Because you have a case. Well, this oh, no, is. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're same. You're like. You're like variables now. I could call it fu instead, but that <laughs> just didn't quite work for me. <laughs> so let's uh, let's print it. Print out my var, my book file data, and see if that runs. So we run. It should print it down here in my output. Once it's still building. You go to the yeah, I can split this. I think. How do I split it? Yeah, it's it's the swift way. It's, so this is because your try is within your do, but your catch is not. I hate this editor. So this is uh, there's my try. Yeah, so your try is within. Yeah, so the try is in brackets. It's 
then your catch is in. It's weird. I it said something about it when you showed it. That's the syntax. Instead of just having a try. I'm Memorize it, it, use it, love it. Oh. I just like, they I can't fix it for you. I know. <laughs> Why even have the do here? Just make this a try. So you want me to just press the I believe button? Exactly. I don't have any other way to tell you that okay. these That's language bizarre. developers here suck. Yeah, I believe. I just think it's funny to like, devote the time to it. When they just it's, yeah, I don't understand it, but that's a try catch. You don't understand it, then I'm okay. I don't understand why they did it that way. I yeah. can see the syntax, but I don't. It's, it is it's a little confusing, yes. Because you'd think there'd be a, another whole bracket around the do at least yeah. or something. Or even do try. <laughs> Take this out. Something. I don't know what. Should have been developing this game. I think, I think they're getting a lot of feedback, which is why the language has changed quite a bit in just two years. It's changed a lot. So, uh, little things like why not have a print line? You have to add this whole parameter at the end of your print to, to not put a character turn in, which is. All right, so did it work? Yes. So it read my file, printed out my exact file. My string now is the entire file, right? So now I'd have to walk through my string, break it up into lines. Then each line, I have to break it up and split it by commas to get all of the pieces of data. And then I could use those pieces of data to create my book object. So that's the, that's where we're trying to go to. Does that make sense? The concept of what I'm trying to do here. So the yeah. Can I get oh, an error? Yeah. Sorry. Commas. Does it automatically throw it into a new one? Because mine formatted. No. So if I changed it, I'm changing it to animals.txt. Let's run it again. I still have an animals.txt on my desktop, yes, you and it reads it and writes it, right? I mean, it reads it. So the reason it looks the right is because the file itself has carriage returns in it. So they're, they're not visible, but let's see. I think I have a way. I know I do in BB Edit, but. Doesn't sh I don't see a way to. Oh, here show invisibles. So there's a there's the the carriage return line feed. So it's in the text. Uh, so it's reading that, and I haven't done anything like splitting it or anything like that yet. So you have to have something, or you'll get an error. So I'm going to go back to books.txt. All right, so we did a little bit of that already where I took the data and I broke it into a, an array. So let's do that. So this, this is an array I'm going to call book file lines. And I'm going to use my book file data. And separate them by the end of line character. So now my book file lines will have so many lines in it. So let's say, let's print my book file lines. Uh, dot count and see how many lines I have in there. Now I switch mine back to books, so it should only be two here. All right, so my array has two elements in it, which are what? What data is element one in my 
is a string, right? It's just a string. So I have to uh, do this again for every string that I have. So I can take, let's, let's just do the first one and show you that we can do that. Is the rabble, the rabble are going to come in? All right, so if I look at book file line sub zero, what is that data type? String. I can do this component separated by string with, with a comma and a space. And then uh, that gives me uh, what type of data? What type of data would book one then be? Uh, no, nope. an, an array of strings again. Because I took one line, I split it by commas, now I have an array of strings. I can print how many of those I have. So I've got five strings finally. And if I break here and run it again, I can look in the debugger and see my variable. So my book one is an array of five values, and there are five strings with sci fi, space, Star Wars, George Lucas 325. Right? If I change this to animals, animal names. And run it again. Now my book has uh, uh, one string, and I know why already. But why it, do I only have one string here? No, no. If you look at the string, I know I can't enlarge this. It's got Abyssinian comma comma. So when it tried to split on a comma space, it couldn't find anything. So it returned one string. So I need to split on something else for this particular file. Yep. So I have now Abyssinian and then a string of nothing and a string of nothing because my first element in my animals doesn't have any color and legs in it. All right, we'll have to stop there, but uh, you can see now that I would, I would loop, I would loop through my book file lines, uh, split each line, create a new animal object, from each element and continue until I, at, at, then at the end, uh, I would add that animal to another array. And at the end, I would have an array of animals, objects that I've read in from, with all the properties that I found. Okay, that's half your program right there. Yep. All right, any questions? We've got to stop here. Yeah, this is the comma separated by string. That's a split. A little more concise. Yes, a little bit. I would say it's nice to, it, it's not a bad thing to have long names like this because it reads like English, but the rest of the language doesn't read like English, so why would I do that? I mean, it, God, I wish they had adopted Ruby. I would have been very happy. Sorry? Can you scroll down just a little? Oh, good God. That's trained by trimming characters instead. This, this took the value of white space and trimmed it, so I only had the string 325. That's what that did. That's in another